school is a place where kids strive for academic success. Have a great weekend, bye. But experts say there's a clear connection between good grades and good health. Nice big deep breath. The health of a child can absolutely determine how well he or she is able to perform in school. Ohio students face serious health risks, and not all kids receive the care they need so they can show up at school ready to learn. You need to meet the basic health human needs of a person before you can start teaching them how to do long division. Some Ohio schools are part of a bold initiative to provide physical and mental health care to students on school grounds during school hours. It's like having a full service clinic in a school. When kids have equal access to health care, it means more opportunities for everyone to succeed in school and in life. The healthier that children are, the better it is for everyone. It is a community issue because healthy students create a healthy school, create a healthy community. Community medicine means we're really going out to meet people where they're at. And school health is really that, it's community medicine. Common sense and scientific studies show healthier kids are better learners. But not all kids have equal access to health care. So, if students can't get to a health care facility, why not bring a health care facility to the students? Look at, she's smiling too. Good morning, Isis. How are you? It's called school based health care. With nearly 2,000 centers nationwide, they range from clinics near campus to ones inside the school. Even mobile clinics like this one parked outside of John Adams High School in Cleveland. The clinic is operated by Metro Health. We can do sports physicals, we can do work permits, we can do a well child exam if they're already not established with a provider. We can do management for chronic care disease like asthma and diabetes. Metro Health operates 15 school-based clinics in the county. It's an example of how districts, health providers, and community agencies come together and deliver care to kids on campus during the school day. And Jen's gonna give you a shot. She's so actually very nice. how long is this nice. needle? It's very tiny. For you, it's very tiny. Oh, okay. <laughs> this clinic travels to a different school every day and sees about 300 students each month. School and clinic staff work together to make it happen. Every school is different. We could have schools that are right across the street from each other. So we really talked to those principals to say, you know, what are those things that you're recognizing in the classroom? How do we make sure we're meeting those needs? So it's really this open communication to really have that efficient care. But open communication does not mean students' privacy or medical data are exposed. There's a thorough process to obtain parental consent and to observe the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, better known as HIPAA. You have to build that relationship. It doesn't mean that you show up, you build a clinic, and everyone's going to come. They need to trust you. Trust was definitely a factor for Tamara Foster, a John Adams graduate who stopped by the clinic to say hello to its family nurse practitioner. He helped me with a very difficult time in my life. I'm not going to say what, but it was a hard, hard time in my life. And I feel like he was the main person that was there for me, who was that shoulder to lean on if I needed someone to talk to. I like dealing with the kids. It's rewarding. We try to do a little extra sometimes, you know what I mean? We encourage these kids, we go out to the field and we check on them. We just get involved with them personally. If this Metro Health van was not parked outside of this school, I would not have made an appointment to go to a, another Metro Health facility. Just for the simple fact that it's convenient. It's, I'm here every day, it's right outside of my school. With the emotional support system that I had, the people that I had, they kept telling me, you're a smart girl, you're a smart girl, you can do this. So it helped a lot having people in your corner who believes in you. This clinic, inside Mound Stem Elementary School on the southeast side of Cleveland, was the first school-based facility Metro Health opened six years ago. So what do you do for exercise? It's sometimes we have to do that thing for like 30 minutes. It's really hard. Experts say school-based health care is one way to improve health equity. 
It's a term that describes the ability for everyone to achieve their full health potential. Challenges that create inequities include lack of access, lack of income, and lack of health insurance. One census tract analysis even showed residents from Ohio's wealthiest neighborhoods are expected to live 29 years longer than residents from the state's poorest regions. How do we maybe shift these things with a younger generation so that hopefully they're not repeating some of the patterns that we're seeing in older adults? Now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side, okay? Bringing the health care to the student resolves a lot of those challenges. Matthew Linick is a researcher who worked with the Cleveland Metropolitan School District to study the impact of school-based health care. We looked at how it might relate to their attendance, how it might relate to discipline, achievement. We also looked at how it would relate to health outcomes that were of interest to the hospital. The research noted crucial connections between absenteeism and academic performance. Every absence impacts your performance on standardized tests, on dropping out, on graduating. We found that for ninth and 10th grade students who miss 10 days in a year, their probability of being on track to graduate dropped by about 40%. On average, high school students missed one and a half days less. And at some schools, like Lincoln West High School, those students missed eight days fewer. Knock, knock. Savannah? Hi, I'm Dr. John. It's nice to meet you. When attendance improved, so did students' grades. We looked at how participating in the program related to grade point average. We saw that for high school students, students who participated in the program at schools like Lincoln West, GPA was 0.43 higher for students who were in the program versus students who were not in the program. Do you want me to give you a hug? Okay. School-based health care also showed a reduction in the misuse of emergency rooms for non-emergency care. You are it's an option struggling families sometimes resort to if they can't access primary care physicians. Providing care in an emergency room setting is incredibly more expensive than providing care in a primary care facility or through a school-based partnership. So the school was getting better attendance rates, they were getting better performance or grade point averages. But the hospital was saving money on emergency room visits. So ultimately, everybody who was participating was benefiting. You need to meet the basic health human needs of a person before you can start teaching them how to do long division or determine the difference between an adverb and a verb. The healthier that children are, the better it is for everyone, which I believe is the most important outcome that we can look at. Making children healthy and happy is kind of our societal <laughs> responsibility. Alexander Local Schools is located in Athens County, which is part of the Southern Appalachia Mountains, the rolling hills of the Appalachia. The rolling hills are beautiful, but Athens is the poorest county in Ohio. One in every three families here lives below the poverty line. I think they're doing the best they can, but not having enough food, coming from a broken home, not having the, the parents there, um, being in foster care. I think a lot of educators throughout Ohio were very frustrated. We're trying to teach, we want our students to achieve, but look what shape they're in. We know we are here to educate, but we also know they need to come to our doors ready to learn. What's your beginning sound? And that's where the district really looks and focuses on students, the whole child. Yeah, good job, you hear that sound. The whole child approach acknowledges that adversity affects learning. School-based healthcare is one way to create a more positive school climate. But for families who are already struggling, meeting basic healthcare needs might also mean facing unbearable choices. 
If you talk to families, the working class families, and you're telling them, hey, you need to get your kid into counseling, there's services available in Athens City, they look and say, well, when do you want me to do that? Because I don't get home till five o'clock and they're closed. Or I've heard, I've got $20. Do you want me to feed my kids tonight or do you want me to take them to Athens? Because it'll go towards gas and getting them in the clinic. Students in pre-kindergarten through 12th grade are all located on the same campus here. One of the things that we're going to do is we're going to check your spine to see if there's a curvature or any scoliosis. Have you ever been told? Physical and mental health services are located right alongside them. We have Athens County Children's Services. We have Hopewell Health Counseling. We have Health Recovery Services. We were able to build a very nice facility for Holzer Family Medical Clinic. It's right on our campus. Good morning. Good morning. We're going to go straight in there. The agencies accept Medicaid, private insurances, or some of them have levies and grant funding. They are. Uh, then they will cover them free of charge. Hi, Debbie. Hi. Mr. Upsolved on. And OK. We can pull a child out of the classroom for 20 minutes to a half an hour, get the medical attention they need, the child does not miss school, and the parents are not missing work. Have you lie back, and I'm just going to take a listen and then I'll poke, okay? That on-site care is important because Ohio residents have health issues, lots of them. The Health Value Dashboard is a tool that we've developed to track the health of the Ohio population and how much we are spending on health care as a state. The dashboard was developed by the nonprofit Health Policy Institute of Ohio. It conducts independent, evidence-based research and analysis. Ohio ranks 46th out of 50 states and the District of Columbia on health value. When we think about what impacts our health, there are a lot of factors. Of course, there's your genes that play a role in how healthy you are. But we also look at other environments and other factors that influence our health. They're referred to as social determinants of health, and they influence 80% of a person's health and well-being. Do we have healthy air to breathe? Do we have clean water to drink? Do we live in a house that has toxins like mold or lead? Addiction is one of Ohio's most serious health challenges. The state has the second highest rate in the country for deaths from drug overdoses. Ohio also has high rates of smoking and food insecurity and low rates for physical exercise and receiving childhood vaccines. With families facing so many challenges, it's not surprising that mental health rates are at crisis level too. The suicide rates of children that are between the ages of 8 and 17 more than doubled in the last 10 years, which is very heartbreaking. We're seeing very high rates of depression compared to other states. Well, do you remember us going over the big word confidentiality? The district partners with Hopewell Health Centers to provide counseling and other mental health services during school hours. They go a little bit deeper than what school counselors can do. It's called trauma-focused care. Looking at how the trauma of whatever they've gone through, how that has affected how they think, because how they think affects how they act. Trauma is really anything. They've been removed from the home. They've been impacted by the drug epidemic, or parents are separating. I'm glad you're having a good day so far. Kids are resilient, but they, they need our help. <laughs> How do you turn into a uniform? Children who experienced a significant number of these adverse childhood experiences have much higher rates of all different types of health conditions in adulthood, and even cancer, heart disease, and unsurprisingly, addiction issues and mental health concerns. Many of these conditions could be prevented or better managed in childhood if all students had fair and equal access to health care. The these school-based health centers could be a great solution for our most vulnerable children in Ohio. In the five years since it started here, school-based health care is already showing results at Alexander Local Schools. We are measuring success by really looking at the data on the state local report card. 
If you look at the overall grade, majority of your districts are getting C's. But if you dig down into that data and you look at your absenteeism, you look at your graduation rate, you look at prepared for success and gap closing, when you see that progress at any level, that tells me what we're doing is working. School-based healthcare is working in Columbus, too. Nationwide Children's Hospital runs this clinic at East High School. Our school-based health center serves all of the children here at East High School, but children from any of the 110 Columbus City Schools are welcome to be seen here in this clinic. We know that people who have a really good understanding of health and wellness and prevention live healthier lives and as a result achieve more. In addition to doing well child checkups and treating illnesses, the clinic helps students who suffer from chronic conditions. The most common one is asthma. Hi, Chloe. Hey. How are you? I'm good. Asthma is the top reason for school absenteeism nationwide. Inhaler, how you feeling? Pretty good, pretty good. Nationwide Children's Hospital responded to the crisis with a school-based asthma therapy clinic. You don't even know what's happening. All you know is that you're not breathing right. Like it just kept getting tighter and tighter. And like I had to like, like really explode my chest out to get more air and better air for me. Cause I wasn't like, I could not breathe and I couldn't even talk. During the past month, how often have you had to use your rescue inhaler or your albuterol? A lot of these kids, they think that's normal. They don't know that it's not normal to wheeze every day, to cough at night all night long. It's very treatable, but if you're not getting treated and you don't have the proper medication and follow-up, you can die from asthma. 900 students in the district are enrolled in the program. School nurses see them daily to monitor symptoms and administer medication. A controller asthma medication is something that helps with everyday symptoms, um, controlling the inflammation and stuff in the airways. So that's something that's going to prevent them from having an asthma attack. Since the asthma clinic started, data shows students who are enrolled experience significant improvement in attendance and a decrease in asthma-related visits to a hospital emergency room. Have a great day, Chloe. All right, bye. Bye-bye. The school nurse also says the program provides emotional support for asthmatic students. A lot of times when students have a chronic illness, they feel very discouraged. I said 20. 24, 22, whatever you guys measured. She make everything seem smooth, like she made me feel comfortable about having it because I got a great nurse. So that support, I think, really does help boost his confidence, knowing that I'm here every day to support him. It just kind of takes a load off so that he can just focus on being a teenager. The school nurse is absolutely critical to the partnership being successful. The school nurse tends to know the history, knows the family, and then the school nurse also does a lot of the follow-up. The continuum of care that we're able to achieve in a school-based health center is really remarkable. One way the clinic supports student health is by offering lunch and learn sessions. Today, the topic is sexual and reproductive health. We find a lot of engagement from the kids. You know, they really want that knowledge. They want to be empowered. They know that we're working to make it fun. Let me see what this one is. Oh, God, this one's bad. <laughs> Research shows adolescent girls with access to school-based health care are more likely to seek reproductive and preventative care, use contraception, and to be screened for sexually transmitted infections. In Ohio, the number of syphilis cases actually are increasing. So this is something you need to be aware about. We really believe that there is no better strategy from a prevention standpoint than knowledge. Making sure that these children have an understanding of what is wellness, what are things that I can do to keep myself well, is absolutely critically important. And knowing day by day, student by student, that we're changing lives is so fulfilling. Prevention is a particularly important point when it comes to oral and dental disease. Students in the United States miss an estimated 52 million hours of school each year because of it. How many times a day should you brush your teeth? Two. How many minutes each time? Two. Can you do that? Two. All right. Back in the Cleveland Metropolitan School District, Mound STEM Elementary School partners with several organizations to provide in-school dental clinics. Today, two clinics are on site. Case Western Reserve University offers the Healthy Smiles Sealant program. Smile America Partners is running another dental clinic down the hall. Hi. Hi, how are you? 
because we see the children in the school setting, they're familiar with the environment. They also come down with their peers, with their classmates. Everything is open and you're with your friends. There's less fear. And it seems to work out fine. Cavities are the most common problem they see. If the decay isn't arrested, you start losing teeth. She has a supernumerary number four. The children we treat have higher incidence of dental disease than, than a more affluent population. And school-based health care really helps address that problem. Issues with vision are another common problem that school-based health care can address. So it looks a little bit better than last time I saw you, so that's good. And you feel better, too. Mm -hmm. This full-service clinic is located inside Garfield Middle School in the Hamilton City School District near Columbus. Doing good. You're almost there. Now close your eyes. A lot of times children have never even had a vision exam, and they're already in 12th grade. Research shows low-income and minority children have the greatest risk of undiagnosed and untreated vision problems, and one in five kids who need glasses can't afford them. Everything looks nice and clear? Okay. Good job. The vision clinic is just one part of Hamilton's school-based health care. Well, we'll see if we can add another inhaler to try to control your asthma a little bit better that you'll be using every day in the morning and at bedtime. It started four years ago after Primary Health Solutions reached out to the district and proposed a partnership. We talk a lot about the non-academic barriers to education, the social and emotional well-beings of our students. And so when Primary Health Solutions first reached out to us, school board members and our superintendent were all in, said, yeah, this is definitely a need. 70% of the district's students qualify for free or reduced price lunches. Many families rely on Medicaid or have no health care coverage at all. Good. I was just checking in. Can you tell me how many are coming from Hamilton Freshman today? But starting a school-based health care clinic is a complex task. Because everybody likes the idea, but how are you going to put this together and how are you going to make it functional? When you work together and you create this collaborative approach, if I leave my position or the superintendent changes, it's bigger than us individually. Everybody has some skin in the game, as we say. To support communities in these efforts, the Ohio Department of Education appointed a school-based health care coordinator. The overall goal of school-based health care from the Department of Education perspective is really reducing chronic absenteeism. We want kids in the classroom engaged and ready to learn, but we also want to make sure that they're healthy and getting the care that they need to become successful adults. School-based health care partnerships do require a lot of effort. But I think ultimately the payoff are these huge improvements in student outcomes and student access to health care. A toolkit on the Ohio Department of Education's website outlines the process and offers resources. The toolkit also includes different federal, state, and local grants that districts can apply for that can help support some of this work. One of the tips in the toolkit is for schools to start small. So you may want the Cadillac of school-based health centers in your facility, but maybe all you need is an immunization clinic, and you're still making strides in the right direction. You're just, you're doing it at your own speed, and you're kind of learning the ropes, how to interact with the providers, how to interact with other agencies if it's something that's completely new to you. Oh my goodness, you're so brave. Good job. Good job. <laughs> Thanks to creativity and collaboration, Hamilton City Schools made the most of its available resources. The space is always an issue, right? We were able to find extra space with the varsity locker rooms, coaches room, equipment room. Once they had the clinic space, they tackled the issue of transportation. The district hired a full-time driver to take students from other schools to this location. Every day, Monday through Friday. It's a well-oiled machine. He's constantly communicating with the school nurses I'll be there in 10 minutes to pick up, you know, so-and-so. And then he tells the navigator at school-based health center, I'm on my way, they'll be here shortly. The final step, maybe the most important step, was to figure out how to serve not just the students, but also their families. Because then once you start to look at this child getting better, a lot of times they convince their parents to come in, or the parents come in to see uh, what's going on with the visit with the child. 
and then they find out that they're eligible to come and get services. And then you really start to see a change because not only do you see healthy children, you also start to see healthy families. And healthy families operate differently than families who have a lot of medical issues. It's about helping families succeed. I've seen a lot of great examples of these partnerships working in a lot of different areas and that really gives me hope to have as many school districts as possible in Ohio doing some sort of school-based healthcare work. School-based health centers are great work and it's exciting work. But I think it's something that really any community can do when they figure out what they need. It's not often that I have to do a lot of work in convincing people that this is a good idea. These children are going to run our community, and if we don't invest in our children at a young age, then what is our community going to look like in 15 years? And I think that makes it a lot easier to get partners to buy in when they realize that this is going to help everybody. It's not just, we're going to do this for schools. Nice big deep breath. It then becomes, we're going to do this with schools for all of us. This program was funded by Track Research Group.